Welcome to Words with Winos. My name is Matt. Hello, hello, everyone. My name is Marilyn. And for our wine today, we are drinking Torre de Rejas. It's a Spanish wine and not really sure what kind it is. Tempranillo? But I don't really know what that means. So it's a red wine, if that helps. So we'll see how it goes. Yes. So on today's episode, we are going to talk to you about our very recent trip to Bergen, Norway. Before we talk about that, we're coming from Prague in the Czech Republic. Uh, We have told you in the past that we lived here and we've been moving around a lot, but we, we still have a home here, so we came back to our home. It's also currently freezing in our apartment. We This is our second night here, and it's so cold. We've been blasting our heat now for two days, and nothing has changed. It's so cold. I'm wearing a hat and a winter coat while doing this podcast. Yeah, and I'm just sitting here struggling because I'm too lazy to go get my jacket. But yes, it's absolutely freezing, and we're not really sure why. They're on, they're working, like our radiators, but just not finding the warmth, and it's really terrible. But anyway, so why exactly did we go to Bergen, Norway, from New York, where we were at the time? Well, for frequent, for well, well, for fre- frequent, I can't say the <laughs> word, travelers, um, I don't know if you have noticed, but on Norwegian airlines uh, from major cities in America, like New York, Boston, Miami, maybe a few others, there are amazing deals to Bergen, Norway. And the deals are basically like $100 or a little more to Bergen from those cities. And... I don't know what the return is, so I don't know if it's cheap to go back, like a round trip, but just going there is super, super cheap. So yeah, we wanted to go back to Prague. We were in America and we wanted to make a stop before we went to Prague. We wanted to stop somewhere in Europe because Prague isn't the cheapest to fly to from New York. So it's actually cheaper to fly to other cities and Bergen is one of the cheapest. So we found a deal on Norwegian airlines.com whatever it is and we booked our flight to Bergen and then booked a flight to Prague and we booked four nights in Bergen quite a long time to spend in a city that probably 90% of you probably more have never even heard of but that was the best deal for us at the time and we booked it for February 22nd and it was the flight was at night at Uh, 9 p.m. and we arrived in Bergen at 9.30 a.m. And we also flew out of Stewart International Airport, which is such a small airport in New York State. It's about mm, like a little over two hours from New York City. And mm, it's such a small airport, so it's like who cares about Stewart Airport, but they have such amazing deals with Norwegian Air, which is you know, how we found this amazing deal. We hadn't found anything really that amazing from like JFK or LaGuardia or anything. We actually ended up paying $130 each to go from New York, Stewart International Airport, to Bergen, which was great. And a fun fact for you about Bergen, it is the second largest city in Norway. And what is its population, Matt? Uh, I, I looked it up. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's around 250 to 300,000 people. So for our second largest city in a pretty major country, it's not a lot at all. Very small city. Yeah, so you would think, okay, that's really small and what could that possibly have to offer? But tons of great stuff. So I think we'll start with the first day. So we took our flight and it was uh, maybe seven hours or so, maybe six hours and 45 minutes, somewhere around there. And then we arrived to the airport in Bergen. And, you know, we walked around there, blah, blah, went through immigration, yada, yada. And then we were like, okay, so how the heck do we get to our Airbnb? And if you, (laughs) in, in the future, we'll have a video and you can see me reading the directions to get to the Airbnb from the airport. And it's just, it was just a nightmare. And so what we had to do is we had to take the light rail, which is basically their tram or trolley or above ground subway, whichever way you, you know, call it. And so we took that and it was about $5 one way. So that was our first expense in Norway. And we were like, okay, well, that's a little expensive for one trip. And we went a good amount of stops though. We went like 20 stops or something. 
And then we got off and then I had to follow these directions on Airbnb from our host and it was just a nightmare and it was absolutely freezing. So what did we, how did we even get to our Airbnb? Well, yeah, we took the, like Marilyn said, the light rail to a stop that she told us to get to. And then we had a walk. And like Marilyn said, the directions were really confusing. I'm already pretty bad at directions, following directions. She normally takes the lead with that and I just follow along. Because without Google Maps, like if I'm not following a map that tells me exactly left, right, straight... I have no idea how to follow directions. I don't know why. I'm just not good at it. And Marilyn uh, was leading us and she was doing a good job. But at one point, like there was a there was a point where we didn't know what to do. Like if it was like climb up these stairs, then make a left. And I don't know. It was, it was a little confusing. And we ended up just walking and it was just straight uphill for like really long time. What did we walk for? Like 45 minutes maybe? I don't remember. Yeah, we were walking outside in general for almost an hour from the light rail to our Airbnb. And what had happened was she had given us like directions to go up this random staircase after going through a tunnel. And there was one staircase to our left and then a ramp. So we're like, okay, so we'll go up the staircase. Oh, but then the directions don't make any sense. So what the hell do we do? Eventually, we're just walking around like, what the F? This doesn't make any sense. And luckily, Matt had downloaded... Google Maps of Bergen, Norway, just so he could use it when we're offline because we we didn't get any phone service there and we didn't have Wi-Fi, obviously, out in the streets of Bergen. So luckily we had that. So what we did was we put the address in there and then we followed it there and then we were walking for a good half hour more and we were just like, what the hell? The direction said this was a 12 minute walk. Why is this taking forever? And it was terrible because we were just freezing. I had a rolling suitcase behind me. Matt had two backpacks. It was just like a nightmare and we're just like please (laughs) I don't want to do this anymore um eventually we did get to our Airbnb thank the gods it took forever and we were welcomed by our host who was very very nice and what do you have to say about our lovely Airbnb yeah it was good we um it wasn't right in the center of the city and I knew that when booking it um it had really good reviews it said it was like 20 minutes away from the center which was totally fine of and that there was transportation pretty much right outside and it was a private room in someone's home and and I like that's like there were some other airbnbs that were kind of shared accommodation like you share one big house with like five other people and there's one bathroom for everyone I'm not really a fan of that, so um, even though the location was better, we booked this one a little outside the city, and it was good. I mean, we we had to like walk into the house and then uh, and then walk up two flights of stairs to our little apartment. We kind of had our own little apartment on the top of the house, and it was it was like nice and clean and comfortable. But the ceiling was so low, like you had a anytime you were walking around, you had a bend. It was kind of like being in an attic or something where you're basically you're. If you're tall, you couldn't stand up straight most of the time. So that was a little uncomfortable. So we tried to spend as little of time as possible inside the Airbnb. But overall, it was, it was good. It was perfect because it had a fridge, a microwave, a bed, um, a nice bathroom. So everything was was good about that. Um, yeah, so we hung out there for a little while. So we were hungry and we went to the grocery store to get food because there, was, there wasn't really any restaurants near our Airbnb and we went to the grocery store. We had to walk like down a ton of stairs, which was totally fine. But then after we got the groceries, we had to walk up the stairs and in the cold and in the ice and in the snow, it su- kind of sucked. It was pretty difficult to walk up and not really fun. And we got some like canned fish, some eggs, things like that, just to like eat quickly before we went into the city center to explore a little bit in the evening. Yeah, and in Norway, they tend to eat a lot of fish. So we felt like, okay, fish, that's definitely a good thing to eat. And if it's canned, that's good because we can't exactly cook this food here. There's no kitchen for us to use. So we did that. We ate, blah, blah, blah. And then we, you know, threw some stuff on our backs and then we went to the light rail. Yeah, okay, sorry, I had to think about that. But yes, we went back to the light rail. That was actually with the directions that our Airbnb host gave us, the correct directions that kind of cuts through people's yards and stuff. That took about 22 minutes to get from her house to the light rail. When we first got there, it took us about an hour the other way, going through all the streets and stuff, all windy. So that was interesting. So we were like, oh, okay, now we see, but we would have never figured this out on our own, but fine. So we got to the light rail and we hopped on and then we went to the city center. I think it's like the last stop 
on the light rail. I forget the name of it. There are so many long names and words in Norwegian. It's very hard to remember. (laughs) And so we got off there. And what did we do on our first day? I don't even remember. We took the light rail into the city center and it was already like later in the evening. So we didn't want to like do anything crazy. And when we got to the city center, we, I think actually before that, when we were riding on the bus and like, as we first got to the city center, um, I think one of my first impressions of Bergen was like, wow, this is a big city. Uh, you kind of got that impression, like the buildings were a little big. Um, they had a lot of public transportations, the, a lot of public transportation. The streets were really wide. So I kind of was surprised of how much of, of a city it looked like. It didn't look like when you Google image Berg in Norway, it kind of looks like this small little Norwegian town with like cool looking houses and, and nice things like that. But it's actually a city. So when we got to the center of the city, we got out, we went to a cafe, got some coffee before we went exploring a little bit. And we, the first thing we did was like notice right in the center, like there's this big I guess park is just like this big opening with a lake and behind the lake is this giant snowy mountain and it's just like such a gorgeous view of the city. It really like throughout the entire city you just see these white snowy mountains and it's just incredible looking because this entire city is built either below or on the mountain. So everywhere you go you see these mountains and it's just kind of like a fairy tale type looking place. Yeah, it looks extremely magical. And the park that Matt's talking about, don't remember the name, but I will put it somewhere. Um, But it's centered around this lake. And it's absolutely beautiful, the lake. And then there's mountains everywhere with snow all over them. All the colorful buildings and houses surrounding the lake. There's little monuments here and there. and And it's just so beautiful. And on top of it, it's also a really quiet and, as we've mentioned, lower population (laughs) lower less populated that's what I want to say less populated city so you just kind of felt really comfortable there even though we were freezing it was really really comfortable it was such a beautiful sight to see for real and we kind of just like got totally dissolved in there we were just walking around and just loving it and god it was just so beautiful and then what did we do that was pretty much it. I mean, we just walked around a little bit and then it started turning into night and we went back. We didn't do anything else. We were kind of really tired from being, uh, didn't sleep really well on the plane. And also we were just jet lagged. So we just went back and we took a bus back to our Airbnb. It was like the number 10 bus. And it pretty much took us right to our Airbnb, like a two minute walk from the bus stop. So that was really convenient and it was right in the center of the city. So that just made everything much easier. So then the next day we woke up kind of early. We woke up at like eight o'clock, 8.30. I remember I wanted to have our alarm set early so we can explore a lot of Bergen. And we pretty much ended up exploring all of Bergen. (laughs) So this is our first full day in Bergen. And the first thing we did was wake up and get ready. And then where did we go first? We went to the tourist center, which is in like pretty much the center of the city. Perfect place for that to be, right? And so we went there and we actually bought Bergen cards, which actually have a huge advantage for those that want to go to Bergen. What those cards do is you pay for them, of course, and it gives you free public transportation, which is so worth it because it's really expensive. And it gives you discounts on museums and even the aquarium, which we'll get to. And it also gives you discount on the Fjord Cruises, which was fantastic because the Fjord Cruises tend to be quite pricey. And so we bought the Bergen cards there. And then we right right there, the same transaction, we also bought a Fjord Cruise for the same day. And we bought them for like a 20% discount with the Bergen card. So it was really worth it for that already because it was expensive. And I think the Fjord Cruise with the discount was about $50 each. Yeah, hello, Norway is expensive. And it was like a three-hour cruise. So, I mean, I guess it wasn't that bad considering what happened when we went there because it was amazing. Anyway, so we did that and then we had some time to kill before our cruise because we got there a little early and our cruise was at two. So we're like, okay, well, what do we do now? So what we decided to do was we walked around and we admired like the the Brigen, B-R-Y-G-G-E-N, the Brigen in Bergen. And it's just these beautiful little 
cute little houses that are really old that are along like the port and that was really beautiful you know it was cool you know whatever little shops and stuff we didn't go on them just admire them for a little bit so how, how much was the bergen card did you mention that you said how much the cruise was but i didn't hear how much the card was the bergen card was i mean it depends you can get 24 hours 48 hours or 72 hours you know the duration that you want the card but i think what we paid was uh like 310 and okay no it was like it was like 280 well then what are you asking me for if you know the answer <laughs> no i i wanted i didn't know if you mentioned it before that's what i was oh. asking because i heard you mention the fjord cruise but i didn't i wasn't sure oh. if you mentioned the card but yeah that, that's important to get i mean we we weren't we normally don't get things like that but our airbnb host suggested it because we get such a big discount on the on the cruise and i don't i don't know i don't know if i would suggest getting the bergen card i mean we didn't use it that much other than the cruise i mean we did but i don't know i guess i i can't really tell because i'm not we did not get it so i i don't know how much better it would be but it's not that big a deal whether you get it or not it's not gonna make or break your trip um, yeah, so like Marilyn said, we went to the Brigand, and I just wanted to mention that when you Google Bergen, because I know there's a lot of deals going to Bergen, so a lot of people are looking it up lately, that's kind of what you see. It's the Brigand, that, that area of those colorful houses in Bergen, and just that really nice thing on the water, those houses on the water. So that's what you see when you Google image Bergen. So it's, yeah, it's pretty pretty cool, and re- it was really nice to look at. Um, Marilyn said that we went to get street food, but we, we actually went to the street food cart that was mentioned to us by the tourist information center and it was reindeer sausage and we got to the reindeer sausage end we found it pretty easily and it looked delicious the girl was making it and getting it all ready and we're just staring at her through the window and she's staring back and we're like waiting for her to open the window to take our order and she just like looks at us eventually and after looking at us three different times and says oh we're closed Okay, we didn't know that. Uh, we were very confused. She, she wasn't very friendly. We encountered her later on too. Uh, so it wasn't just that one time. But yeah, so we couldn't get the reindeer sausage and we were really hungry and we didn't really know where to eat. We were kind of like searching for uh, a cafe or a place to, to eat or drink coffee or something. And we actually ended up going to Burger King to get Wi-Fi to figure out where to get food or McDonald's, Burger King. We went to one of those fast food places and we found a place that has like typical Norwegian food. I don't know how to say the name at all. It's Norwegian and it's something with an S, but we'll mention it in the <laughs> in the blog post. But it was right next door to where we were. So we walked like two minutes to this restaurant. And when we walked in, we just saw like a bunch of like fish patties. Like there was tons of fish patties Fish, yeah, fish cakes, but when you, it's a patty. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're called fish cakes. And we just stared at them and kind of stared at the person behind the counter. And she was just like, oh, do you need help? And like, yeah, absolutely. And she explained every single fish cake to us. And even though we didn't remember it all. And then we ended up just ordering one of each. And we also ordered a fish soup each. So we ordered um, a bunch of fish cakes and fish soup. And they were all different flavors. Like some had like bacon and cheese. Some were just straight up fish. Some had like chopped vegetables. And they were all really delicious. A lot of them did taste similar, but they were really, really good. And the fish soup was awesome. Uh, We ate that like three different times while we were in Bergen. Um, But the first time was like the first time we're really tasting it. And it's just has these like little fish balls. It has like crushed, um, it has green onions and just those chopped up carrots and it's just creamy and it kind of tastes like a fish soup like in America like a lobster bisque or clam chatter or those type of things and it was really really good I absolutely agree with Matt I mean that was like one of my biggest highlights was eating that fish soup I mean you should have just seen me eating it every time we had it just slurping it down it was absolutely good absolutely amazing so if you go to Bergen definitely get fish soup for every meal. Oh my God, I can't talk already. Already drunk. (laughs) Anyway, so yeah, and the fish cakes are also really, really good. There are so many different kinds of flavors and fillings for them, and they're just amazing. You can also get them with sauce on them. You can dip them in stuff. There's also different kinds of fish dishes and stuff that you should try as well. And yeah, it was really, really good. And next, then we, we still had some time to kill. So we actually went to a cafe called 
Aura, A-U-R-A. And we just went there and had some espresso and had a nice little view of like this cute little alleyway in Bergen. And it was just adorable. We had some espresso, just looked out and la la la, killed some time before our fjord cruise. And then, you know, the time came, we were like, all right, let's head to the port, which is two minutes away from here, which is great. And we just walked right over, got on our cruise and right, we went on the cruise next. Well, we actually, before the cruise, we walked around the area where the cafe was for like maybe an hour. And the area was really cool near the, what did you say, Aura Cafe? Mm-hmm. And it's like kind of like when you picture in Norway, like all these cool little alleyways and houses and type villages uh, it was in that area. There's lots of store, little stores. It was really, really cool to just walk around, take some pictures and videos. And we just hung out there for a little bit. And then we went to the cruise. And yeah, we went to the port, like Marilyn said. And we got there. And pretty much like 10 minutes later, the cruise took off. Um, we, we sat inside first because it was really cold and there was really nothing to see for the first like 10 to 20 minutes. So we just sat inside and hung out. And on the cruise, on the Fjord cruise, it's called... Bergen Fjord Cruise, I think. Uh, it has like a special name, but that's pretty, that's kind of how it is. And you, you can buy like food and drinks and things like that on the cruise. But a warning, you should bring your own stuff. We saw a lot of people have their own like alcohol, their own food, their own drinks, whatever. Because Norway is extremely expensive. And we realized that very quickly, like things are like quadruple the price of what you're probably used to. Um, It depends what country you're from, but they're really, really expensive, everything. So we didn't really get any, we didn't get anything at all on the cruise. We were thinking about getting a glass of wine, but we didn't because of the prices. But if you do go on the cruise, bring your own stuff. It's definitely will save you a lot of money and it's just a lot easier. Um, So on the cruise, we did actually have leftovers of our fish cakes because we ordered way too many and we brought some on with us. So that was perfect because it definitely filled our hunger because it's a three hour cruise, like really long time. And you you might get hungry or thirsty on the cruise. So definitely bring your own stuff. Um, So 20 minutes in, there's really not much to see. But as you start getting towards the fjords and towards the cold, icy parts of the water in Norway it starts getting really beautiful like the mountains and just the water is so blue and dark dark blue and the mountains are so icy and snowy and we went outside and a lot of people also started to going started going outside and it's just amazing on top of the boat like it's so cold and so windy Uh, it really it hurts to be up there for a while but it's just so beautiful and magical looking that it's just worth suffering for a little while and Actually, at one point, um, well, they told us beforehand, but there was ice on the normal path that the cruise takes, but um, so we couldn't go the normal path and we had to take an alternative route. And I don't know what exactly that route was, but either way, it was a really beautiful, awesome experience. Yeah, I I love the Fjord cruise. It was one of my highlights of our trip. I was honestly really hesitant about doing it at first because it is a little pricey. And, and, you know, God, I'm in Norway. It's like, yeah, you just got to embrace the priciness. And, you know, I was like, oh, man, I don't know. Is it really going to be worth it? It's winter. Is it going to be pretty? Blah, blah, blah. And my God, all of my fears were just totally thrown out once we were actually on that cruise and just driving through the fjords and just admiring nature's beauty at like at its finest was just unbelievable. And we were, as Matt was saying, we were staying on that upper deck of the cruise outside and just bracing the wind as the cruise was like growing, going at full speed. And we're just like holding on to each other and and just like, just hardly hang on to our thing. I was afraid I was going to lose my hat and my phone. I was like, I'm scared to take pictures. It's going to blow away. Luckily, my phone did not blow away, but it was just absolutely unbelievable. And honestly, one of my favorite things that I've seen in my life so far. It was just absolutely beautiful. And I hate winter. I really hate it. And I was able to enjoy that even when I was freezing my buns off. So it was really, really worth it. So if you're ever going to Bergen and you're like, maybe I shouldn't do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Yeah, definitely. I agree. I thought it was one of the best nature scenes I've ever seen in my entire life. And like Marilyn said, we were debating whether or not we should do it. And actually we asked our Airbnb host, like, should, should we do it? 
And like, is it worth it or worth, worth the price? And she was like, yeah, absolutely. It's the thing you have to do if you come to Bergen. And I totally agree. I think it would have been a different trip, a different experience of the city if we didn't do that cruise. So it was awesome. So after the cruise, we got back to the port and we want to go check for that reindeer sausage again because it was right near the port and we figured it'd be open by now. So we went to get the reindeer sausage and it was a different girl, not the angry one. And <laughs> she was really helpful. Like we asked her, like there's tons of different sausages, but we got the original reindeer one. And then like she asked us like, do you want the typical Norwegian like toppings? And we're like, yeah, sure. And she put mustard, jelly, so like jam, strawberry jam, and fried onions like crush uh like fried like crunchy onions so really weird combination of things on a sausage and we also got it without the bun and it was really good uh like you'd think with the jelly and the and the onions it would be a little strange but it was delicious yeah it was such a surprise and uh, it was actually called the strawberry sauce if you will but basically like jam but not chunky and it was just unbelievable i was like this is so good i even like the strawberry sauce on here i can't believe it it was really good i'm kind of bummed that reindeer sausage isn't more popular because i was obsessed with it um and it was about 70 or 65 and okay and that is oh god the conversion rate i'm terrible so i'm gonna say like about seven dollars ish like around there for one big sausage it was a big sausage but it's like seven dollars come on man But it was really good, so I don't care. (laughs) Yeah. So after that, we wanted to go to the top of Mount Floyen, right? (laughs) F-L-O-Y-E-N. I really loved his pronunciation of that. Sorry, I'm laughing in the background. I don't know if it was right. It just seems like it would be said like that. (laughs) So we took a vernicular up. It's A vernicular is like a bus. Not vernicular. Funicular. I always forget how to say it. (laughs) funicular and it's like a bus that goes up a mountain it's pretty cool and um we took the funicular up thing and it wasn't i just wanted to say that the funicular was free with our bergen card another benefit of the bergen card yeah definitely and then she told us something about it being free twice both ways i don't know what she meant but okay so we got to the top of the mountain and it was awesome it was really really beautiful you got an entire view of norway not norway bergen (laughs) Uh, and um it was we got there like before sunset so it was still light out and we watched it like transform into night so that was really cool like we watched it being kind of bright out to pitch black with all the lights and it was really really nice you really got an entire view of the city like you saw the houses and buildings on the mountains like throughout the entire mountain and it's just really cool looking it was super super cold up there i didn't have gloves this entire trip so it was really cold but any anytime i was doing things i was doing a lot of filming so my hands were freezing the entire time i was out because my hands were always out not really in my pocket so it was it was cold up there but so worth it Oh yeah, it was really cold. It was absolutely beautiful, totally worth it. I really agree with what Matt is saying. Uh, But I also had these boots on that aren't, like they're boots, but they're not exactly like snow boots, you know. They're just kind of fashion boots. So I was literally standing on ice because for some reason they just don't shovel any snow or ice up there where people stand and take pictures and look out. So I was just standing on ice and my feet were freezing on the bottom and there was just no no reprieve for me. And I was just like, oh my God, I want to die. Anyway, but otherwise it was really, really beautiful. And just, it was really nice to see the whole city and see actually how large it was and how beautiful it was. And, and the fact that it's just tucked away in this valley along this mountain range kind of, and it was just, just beautiful. If I could find another word, that would be wonderful, but it was really, really beautiful. Yeah. So after that, eventually we went down the funicular again. It was very short ride, like five minutes up the funicular and then down (laughs) and then we we were trying to think find a place to eat we were like no we cannot afford that no because it's really expensive to go out to eat or and or go out for a drink I mean if we were looking on menus and hamburgers were like 25 dollars each and we were just like uh no 
but thank you. So, and everything else was just even more. So that was like the cheapest thing we could really find on menus. And so what did we do? We just went back to our Airbnb, right? Or did we go to the grocery store and get more canned fish? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, we, we got more canned fish and eggs and random things like that. And we took that back, hopped on our bus again, and then went back to our Airbnb. By the way, the public transportation system is very easy to follow. If you're ever curious, it's so easy. You just look on a map and be like, okay, here it is. For the most part, it's easy. Sometimes the buses are annoying, but otherwise it's really, really easy. And didn't we get off at the wrong stop? Oh, we got off a little, yeah, we got off a little too late on the way back. We missed our stop and, but it was okay. It was only like a five to seven minute walk from that missed stop. So it was no problem. Yeah, so we ate food at our Airbnb, and that was it. We never went out to eat at night once for dinner, like Marilyn said, because the hamburgers... I'm just using that as an example, because that's an item that people have on menus throughout the world. And $25 is just insane. And that doesn't include anything else. That's the hamburger and maybe a side of something. But no drinks, no appetizers, no anything. So you're you're looking to spend between two people at least fifty to like seventy dollars. At least at least fifty, like at absolute least. But like usually like seventy dollars or more if you don't get any alcoholic beverages. So it's expensive. It's it's an expensive country, and as you know, we are budget travelers, and we don't like to spend that much money on. I mean, food. I mean, a hamburger is is a lot for $25. Uh, So yeah, we went to, we ate our food, went to sleep, and then woke up the next day kind of late. Like not, we didn't set any alarms. I think we woke up at like 1030 instead of 830. And we, the first thing we did was we went to this castle. What was the name of the castle? Uh, We don't remember the name of the castle. We don't remember the name of the castle. I had it in my brain, but it's not there right now. And we know that it starts with a G, but we're not exactly sure of the oh, name. I know. Oh, Gamelhagen. Yeah, it we w- did it. We figured it out. Good yeah. job. <laughs> it was Gamelhagen Castle. So we went there because it's our Airbnb host left us like a book of things to do. And from our Airbnb house, it was like a 37 minute walk from there. So we were like, okay, let's let's do that. We don't really have we we pretty much did all the major things yesterday. So let's go to Gamelhagen. So we walked to Gamelhagen. It was an okay walk. I mean, she said it was like through like forest and woods in this really cool area. And it, it was for like maybe a second, but it wasn't that special of a walk. It was mainly like on the streets of Norway, like a kind of a highway and then on people's streets. So it wasn't that special of a walk. And we got there and it was pretty cool. Um, the the actual castle is on like really cool grounds. There's a lake and there's like woods and maybe that's what she was talking about. And there was a lake and woods and like a greenhouse and really cool things. Maybe in the winter it wasn't that special. But I feel like if you went in the summer or the spring when all the trees and grass are alive, it could be a lot prettier. But in the winter, it really wasn't too special. The lake was frozen. Everything was just dead and cold. But yeah, it, it, it was it was pretty cool. I mean, I liked the castle. Uh, I thought it was pretty magical just to look at the castle itself, just sitting on a hill and it had a nice view of Bergen. But it, you know, it wasn't that spectacular. You know, you think of a castle like, ooh, magical. But it was like, all right, here's a castle. It's, there it is. It's not crazy. But also, a fun fact for you, it's actually the house that the king of Norway stays in when he visits Bergen. So that was cool. Pretty interesting to, to think that the king just stays there occasionally. Um, we also got to look into one of the rooms from the outside. And it was really cool. It literally looked like a room from a castle. Like a, It was like a big library with tons of books and these cool embroidered chairs and a candelabra. And we were just like, ooh. So that was that. And then we were done with the castle and we were like, okay, well, we don't want to walk 40 minutes back to our Airbnb because then we're in the middle of nowhere again. And then what's the point? So what we had to do was we just walked around and it was a Sunday, by the way. So we were struggling to find anything because so many shops were closed. And we finally found a bus stop. And luckily, it was a bus that we needed to go into the center because that's where we wanted to go, of course. And it was, it only came once per hour. And we were like, oh my God. And we had 25 minutes until the bus was to arrive. So Matt, what did we do during that time? I thought it was longer than 25 minutes. I don't know. It was, it was a while. 
And I had to pee really bad. <laughs> and I drank a lot of water in the morning. And there was really nowhere to pee the entire ca- castle grounds and on our walk to the castle. So we, like, just we walked past the bus stop and we found, like, th- woods. <laughs> like, maybe our Airbnb host said there was woods. And I just peed in the woods. So that was good. And we did that. And like Marilyn said, it was Sunday. I feel like, I don't know if, I mean, it's not every European country, but most, like the the entire country just shuts down. It's like everything is closed. There's not many people on the street. It's just so desolate. And it's really weird. Like you, you think, like if you arrived in Bergen, Norway, or a lot of different cities and countries on a Sunday in Europe, you would think like, oh, this city sucks. It's so dead. Everything's closed. Nothing's fun. Because everything really is just closed and people, most people aren't out. And that's really how it felt in Bergen on Sunday. It was really dead in most places. And the bus every hour, that's a long time, especially in the middle of the day. Uh, so yeah, we, we found another bus stop. And the bus, it wasn't the bus we were waiting for. It was a different bus, but it came right away. So right after I peed, we got to the bus stop and it was there. And we took the bus into the city center because that really is like one of the best places to go in Bergen. I think, I mean, we're not experts on Bergen, but from our four days there, definitely the city center is a good spot to to go to. So we got to the city center and we were just looking for food. We were so hungry at this point. And it's so hard to find a affordable restaurant like when you're in a lot of cities there's always like cheap eats whatever when you look up cheap eats in bergen there's like two restaurants and one of them was the fish cake place and one was another one and they're both closed on sundays so eventually we walked past this restaurant it was like a a vegan restaurant right yeah because it was the only thing that was open and we saw like the prices and it didn't seem too bad I went inside and they had like four things on their menu. Inside was really cool. Like it was um, pretty interesting. It was cool lighting. There was also like a a hall, like a a kind of a room in the back of the restaurant where people were just sleeping on the couch or like packing up their things because they were just sleeping on the couch. It was kind of weird. I don't know. It's a mixture of like a hostel and a restaurant in in the same room. Uh, So yeah, we ordered at this vegan restaurant. We got these salads. Uh, What were they called? They were called Buddha bowls and they had like sweet potatoes, beets, arugula, onions, carrots, some seeds. And we also got the vegetarian option and got some eggs. So that was good. Honestly, it tasted really, really good. And it was about 109 NOK each. So that's like $12 each for this bowl. And then we also got these juices. They're like antioxidant friendly, I guess. I don't really know. But it was really actually really, really good. We were like, oh, there's so many flavors. And it was really good. So if you're into vegetarian slash vegan food and you're in Bergen, definitely go to this place because it was really good. So then I think we just spent some time walking around Bergen after that. And then eventually we we went to that same cafe that we mentioned earlier called Aura. We got some more espresso and fish soup because we were still hungry. And we shared a bowl of soup and it was so good. It was more expensive at this one place that we went to, but it was really, really good. I mean, God, I just love fish soup. I wish I had it right now. But anyway, it was really good. And we walked around some more and then we just kind of like went to the grocery store again and, and went back to our Airbnb. But the best part was we took the bus back and this was a whole debacle. We took the bus back and we saw our stop on the sign in the bus that tells you like the next stop and we were like okay so let's hit the stop button hit the stop button the bus came to a screeching halt and we were like okay well i guess we'll get off now so we got off and we were like where the hell are we and we walked to the next bus stop we were seven bus stops from our stop we were like how did this happen (laughs) we were like so confused and then we had to wait like 20 minutes until the next bus came to come get us because we could not walk that far it was very very far and then yeah so that was that and we survived that luckily but it was at the time we were just like well what the hell so after that we went back to our airbnb ate some grocery store food which we ate every night and honestly our grocery store foods food meals were pretty good i mean we microwaved eggs and made like scrambled eggs and we also had these canned fishes and pickled fishes or oiled fishes i don't know what they're called fish in a jar with oil and they were all really good so we enjoyed that um and then the next day we um we didn't really know what to do in bergen because we were there for 
we were there for four nights and like I said that was kind of a long time to stay in this small city but we pretty much did all the major things pretty early on and then as the um as, as the days went on we were running out of things to do especially on this last day I was literally searching up for things like really minor things to do in Bergen and that night, I actually had a lot of trouble sleeping. I was having severe jet lag. I didn't fall asleep till like 5 a.m. And we slept until like 12.30 p.m., which was great. It kind of killed the day a little bit because we didn't really have too much to do in the day. But the night before, I actually found that um, there's an aquarium in Bergen, which I don't really care about going to the aquarium. But I heard the area, like on the walk to the aquarium, is really nice. It really has like cool Norwegian houses and alleyways. And that was something I wrote down. And when we woke up the next day, I said, okay, let's let's go do that. And we, we got a late start to the day, which was fine. And we went, first we went to go get some food. We were really hungry. And we went to the fish cake place again uh, because it was really good. And it is Norwegian food. And the people were really friendly in there. And the prices were relatively affordable. So we ordered a large cup of fish soup this time instead of the small. We got some fish cakes. Instead of ordering one of every one, we got like five of the ones we liked the best. And we split it. And it was really awesome. Really delicious food. That was definitely my favorite place to eat in Bergen. Out of the one out of one places we ate. Um... <laughs> So after that, we started walking towards the area, the Bergen Aquarium area, and the information I found online was totally correct. The walk to there was awesome. Uh, it was like really good, like the, the houses were really beautiful. They were really colorful. They were super Norwegian. It kind of felt like you were really in this old Norwegian town from like the 1500s. I have no idea what year I would, what the houses looked like in old Norwegian days, but that's what I would imagine, like 1500 Norwegian houses. And they were just beautiful. We were just walking through these alleyways, taking pictures, videos, and it was a really nice walk to the aquarium. I absolutely agree with Matt. I was not really knowing what to expect. I was like, I'm sure that the houses on the way to the aquarium will be really pretty. I'm not sure how they'll look or whatever, but how could they possibly compare to the Brigand? you know, the houses on the port, as we mentioned earlier, but they were so beautiful. They were so colorful and they were all unique and just like all so cute. And the best part was that it actually snowed overnight. So there was also like fresh snow on the houses and on the streets and sidewalks. And I hate snow so much, but in this particular time frame, it was very, very beautiful and just also captivating and just just so romantic looking, if you will. And we were just loving it. And although it was like a 30 minute walk from the center to the aquarium where we were going, it was just totally worth it. We were just like getting lost in all the homes and just taking constant pictures and videos and just like ooing and eyeing. So that was what we were doing. And then we got to the aquarium and fun fact for you, our Bergen card was only for 48 hours. And as we told you, we got it pretty much like the second day we were there. And this was like the fourth day and it already like the time was over for our Bergen cards. But because it was on the 26th, it would have ended. What we did was we wrote an eight. Ugh, sorry, we're so sorry, Bergen. But we had to because you're so expensive. So we just changed the six on there to an eight because it was handwritten. And it just easily meshed in. So we went to, we went, terrible people I know. We went to the aquarium and we handed over our Bergen cards like, oh, we have Bergen cards. And they like didn't even, were like, okay, here you go, check. And now you can go into the aquarium for free. And we were like, yay. So that's another advantage of your Bergen card. You can get into the aquarium for free. I hope that you don't cheat Bergen out of all of their money because they are really, really amazing people. But we had to do what we had to do. We were very desperate. But yeah, so then we went to the aquarium and that was really cute. It was really small. There were a couple of ex exhibits actually outside because it was so cold. We saw penguins. We saw some sea lions and that was really nice. And then we went inside and saw a lot of stuff too. You know, like a typical aquarium, but it was small and it was, you know, it did the job. It was a free ticket to an aquarium. Who can argue with that? Yeah, and they had other animals too. They had like zoo animals. They had like these little monkeys and uh, also a lot of reptiles from South America. And it was cool. I mean, I I don't, I won't really go to zoos or aquariums as things to do, but when they're free, absolutely, I enjoy them as long as they're 
like okay, they're not in terrible condition, which this one was totally fine. And yeah, I enjoy looking at animals, they're fun to look at. So I enjoyed our experience in the zoo, and like Marilyn said, we we wrote an extra day on our cards, and yeah, I mean, I I guess I I mean I don't feel bad about it. We we never steal or do anything illegal like that anywhere ever. We where we go, but this was just so easy. I mean, they don't scan your cards. All they do is look at the date that's on it, and I don't even know if they look at the date. They could really care less. They just look at your card and they kind of just put a check mark for the day that you're going there. So I mean, that was fine. It was so expensive there. I don't I don't really feel bad about taking money from the city they have a lot um yeah but the the aquarium was really cool and then on the walk back we went through those little towns and villages again and they were really really cool um i really that was like one of my favorite parts of bergen they were better than the the brigan um which is one of the main things to do in bergen so i actually enjoyed the little side tours better than the actual main attraction so that was really cool and then yeah we got some more grocery store food again pretty much the same crap we've been eating the entire trip went back and ate our grocery store food and our Airbnb lady came up and gave us information on how to get back because our flight was really early the next day, like 7.30 in the morning. The light rail to the to the airport doesn't start until like 5.30 in the morning and that kind of wouldn't give us enough time to maybe get there or maybe 6, not 5.30. 5.30 would give us enough time to get there. So we actually, there's this shuttle to the airport and we had to wake up at like 3.50 in the morning and take this shuttle. Uh, this shuttle was kind of a far trek at 4.30 in the morning. We had to, we had to go down these really slippery stairs and it, was, it snowed the day before and everything was really icy. I fell twice while walking down to the bus. It wasn't fun at all, but we had to do it. And the bus cost about... 11 to 12 dollars i think to get to the airport it was a very quick ride like 15 minutes but it was just so cold and so icy that morning we had to leave yeah so as matt said like the light rail doesn't start running until 6 a.m each day so we were like okay well our flight's at 7 30 so that's not gonna cut it so yeah we took the shuttle bus and as matt said i think it cost 91 and okay each so that's about like $10, $11 or something each, which is kind of annoying because it was only like 15 minute ride. And yeah, Matt fell twice, which was so funny. Sorry, Matt. It was really funny. It wasn't funny at the time, but now that I think it, it, it was funny. It's kind of funny for me because I had the crappy boots that had been failing me the whole time. And Matt was like, oh, my feet are so warm. Look at me. But my boots had excellent traction and I never fell. And his had terrible traction and he fell. And he had he has uh, Timberlands, right? Timberlands? Whatever. You know, you know what I'm talking about. Those boots. And he had those and he was just like slipping and sliding. I felt so bad because it was so early. But now I'm just like, teehee. Anyway. So we survived and then we got to the airport and the airport was actually extremely easy to go through. We were through like security and check-in and like... 10 minutes not even like maybe seven minutes yeah most of the airport is run by robots like you don't even deal with people um you just kind of like check in yourself then you then you put in your boarding pass by yourself security is the only place that has people and then when you actually board the plane there's no people you just scan your boarding pass it's absolutely amazing it's completely run by, it's almost completely run by machines and it really does make the process easier so i guess we gotta fire people right we need to replace people with machines it's a terrible terrible motto anyway so i finished my wine what are you doing matt sleeping anyway so my final conclusion about bergen awesome 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 there's just so much to see in bergen and also if you're a huge skier slash snowboarder I saw a lot of people with those walking around. So it's definitely a great place, I think, to ski and snowboard. Not sure on the prices. You'll have to look that up yourself. But I know that a lot of people do that there and it's supposed to be amazing. Otherwise, people wouldn't do it. Duh. Everything was just so beautiful. The houses, uh, just the overall 
mountains and nature, the fjords. I mean, everything was just absolutely beautiful and it totally blew me away. Like I wasn't really, I was like, okay, we're going to Norway. It's going to be really expensive, but what's going to possibly going to, you know, be there for us? And it was just so amazing. Like it was, it was expensive for sure, as we mentioned so many times, but I think that it was worth it. Yeah, I think that's pretty much what I have to say about Norway. I loved it, at least Bergen. And I really, actually really want to go back to Norway and experience more of the country. Matt, what did you think of Bergen? Yeah, I thought it was amazing. I wrote down some things to remind myself about my final thoughts on Bergen. What Marilyn just said, there's tons of things to do there. I disagree with that. I don't think there are tons of things to do there. I think there's a good amount of things to do there. We were there for four days and it was actually hard on on the third and fourth day to kind of find things to do. I think we could have spread out our first day a little better because we did so much on that first day. And then I think our trip could have gone a little smoother because we were really struggling to find things to do to occupy our time all day. But I think a good amount of time in Bergen would be two to three days instead of three to four um, because there honestly isn't too many touristy things to do but it's an awesome city it's really beautiful and an amazing place and I truly enjoyed my time there I also really liked our the cafes there Uh, each day we went to a different cafe to drink some coffee and I thought they were all really cool they were really nice and and like all had their own quirky feel to them. Uh, they had good coffee, good whatever. And they all, a lot of places also have Wi-Fi, which is honestly, I think rare in a lot of countries. Uh, sometimes when we don't have, when we're visiting other countries than the one we're living in, we don't have phone service. So we really rely on Wi-Fi to find things to do and, and where, wherever we want to go next, places to eat. And the, the Wi-Fi in Bergen in Norway, I don't know, maybe all of Norway, but I would imagine it it's good. It's it's very easy to find, which is super, super convenient for travelers. So the Wi-Fi there was wonderful. We found really fast Wi-Fi wherever we went. I really enjoyed that. And I think a major thing uh, also was the people were so friendly in, in Norway, uh, in Bergen anyway. They were so friendly. Everyone spoke English, which was such a big deal. I mean, anywhere we went, they would, they, I think they would greet us in English before they would greet us in Norwegian, to be honest. I don't know if they just speak English or they just knew we were foreigners immediately, but everyone speaks English. It's absolutely amazing when you're traveling that the English is just that prevalent. And also just the friendliness. I mean, anytime we went somewhere, people were so helpful, especially that fish cake restaurant, the first girl just explaining every single fish to us. Then we even went back a second time and the guy didn't know we've been there before but he sat there and he explained like the fish soup with us he went through all the fish with us again and I feel like so many people we encountered with were just so overly friendly and helpful and that was just really really nice that I feel like that really makes a place because you just feel really comfortable that everyone's just so welcoming of foreigners in their country and it's just amazing except for the reindeer sausage girl she was really mean we went to her again actually we got reindeer sausage twice and the second time again she was really mean so she was a mean person but besides her every other person was super friendly and we really enjoyed that Norway is super expensive so if you're young and you don't really have too much money or you're just old and you don't have too much money it's expensive don't expect to go out to eat and drink every night like animals because it's so expensive you're going to end up spending a ton of money we didn't even go out to eat and we still ended up spending a ton of money but overall Bergen was an absolutely amazing city and I would recommend it to anyone who has those deals and they can go to Bergen for such a cheap price Matt that was so much better said than what I said but I do agree that there are are so many friendly people in Bergen. That one girl at the reindeer sausage stand was different. But everyone else that we encountered was so friendly, so helpful, so kind. I mean, at one point we were even lost looking at the bus schedule and trying to find out where our bus was at one point. And there was just a guy that looked at, just literally took one glance at us and was like, do you need some help? And we're like, yes, please. And he just gave us like a full explanation of where to go and how to get there. And it was just amazing like everyone that's just a prime example of the people there they're all so helpful so kind so sweet and just genuinely like good people and one more positive about norway how do people greet you in norway matt what do they say (laughs) so when we first got there we actually didn't know how to say hello or things like that thank you and all the people just go hi (laughs) and 
uh, hi. And the, it was really funny that we, I don't know if we didn't even look it up. I don't know if that's like how you say hi in Norwegian or hello in Norwegian, but that's what they were saying. Hi. And we noticed that everywhere we went. So it was really fun to say because they say hi, like really happy and enthusiastically. So we really enjoyed saying hi to everyone in Norway. Yep, that's how they greeted you. I'm pretty sure that that is how you say hello in Norwegian or at least some kind of greeting is hi because they that's how they greeted us no matter if they knew we spoke English or not. They would say hi. So it was really great. And we would say hi right back. And it was like, oh yeah, we're speaking English basically. Uh, so that was a great positive. Um, so anyway, I finished my wine. How are you doing, Matt? Yeah, I finished two. So that's it. Go to Bergen, Norway if you get the chance. It's really awesome. Like Marilyn said, we would definitely go back to Norway if we get the chance to. We will get the chance to, but we will definitely go back. I mean, especially to see the Northern Lights, which we were looking out for in Bergen. But Bergen's kind of in the south of Norway, so you kind of got to be more up north to see them. But yeah, Norway was awesome. I agree. We'll make it back one day to see more. All right, guys. Thank you so much for listening. Oh, and what did you think of the wine, Matt? I actually liked it. It, it was it was pretty good. Yeah, it tasted good. I'm, you know, drunk, whatever. Um, So it did the job. All right, thank you so much, everyone, for listening. Love you guys, and talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you guys so much for listening. If you want to hear more of our podcast episodes, you can find us on Apple Podcasts. We are Words with Winos. You can also check out our website, wordswithwinos.com. That has pretty much everything. It has our podcast episodes. It has our YouTube videos. It has our blog posts and a bunch of pictures of all our travels. You can also check us out on social media, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all those things, Words with Winos. And yeah, thanks for listening. Bye.